What is Linux? A friend asked me this on the way back from Jiu Jitsu one night. I gave them an answer, but it got me thinking about this video. How do I answer the question to someone who is interested in Linux, but may not really be familiar with it or is familiar with tech in general? My goal with this video is to give you a high level answer of that question and then try to dive into some of the details about what that actually means for the discussion. So at a high level, Linux is an alternate operating system that can be used in place of Windows or Mac. It is released in different distributions, often shortened to distros, and we'll talk more about distros in a future video. The big points for Linux is that it is free to use, open source, and highly customizable. So one key word you may not have understood in that sentence is open source. What is open source? We'll talk more about what this means from a practical sense in a future video, but Open source means that the source code for the application is available to view and often modify. And the source code is the code that actually gets compiled or executed to run the application. So the next question you may have is, how did we get Linux? Where did it come from? So Linus, no, not that one, Linus Torvalds sent out a Usenet message on August 26th, 1991, you're seeing it on screen here, and I've highlighted a few portions just to show that Linus had no idea quite what he was getting into with the creation of Linux. If you think you've heard the name Linus Torvalds before, he also created Git. Not GitHub, but Git, the versioning tool. So if Linux has started in 1991, let's put in perspective where kind of everybody else was. Windows was on Windows 3.0. It actually released that year. Macintosh computers, meanwhile, were running System 7, which was also released that year. I would start using a computer about three years later, late in the 3.1 lifecycle, just a bit before the Windows 95 release. So I've been keeping a secret here. I've kept this simple, but Linux isn't Linux. And you're like, well, what are you saying? Why have you been telling me all this stuff if this is not it? Well, here's the thing. In a technical sense, a Linux distribution is generally made up of multiple parts. Two of the big parts are GNU and the Linux kernel. So GNU, G-N-U, is a lot of the operating system applications that are actually included in a Linux distribution. But you're asking, okay, where does Linux come in? Linux is the kernel, which is kind of the thing that connects everything together. So it handles things like hardware drivers. So due to this, you'll sometimes see the meme about GNU slash Linux. And I do understand the argument here, but I find it to be a confusing one for most people. And in most conversations, it's probably not worth bringing up. But I bring the meme out here just because it's a meme. So you may be asking, how difficult is it to install Linux? It's actually fairly easy. You just need to download an ISO, put it on a USB drive, and then run through the install on a machine that you have. Now, you got to make sure if you want to back up Windows or, you know, have Windows running on a separate partition, that gets a little more advanced. But for a basic install of Linux, you're usually looking at 5 to 10 minutes, maybe 15 if you have to download a lot of applications. So you may be asking, where is Linux used? It's actually used a lot more places than you think. First up, you obviously have desktop computers like the one I'm recording this video on right now. It's something where the market share for desktop Linux is not a huge one, but there are people out there that want to run Linux, and oftentimes you'll see a performance boost on your PC just because the lack of overhead that Linux has. Another place you really see a lot of Linux use is single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. There are various offshoots as well. A lot of these are running some form of Linux or building a project on the help of Linux. There are also groups out there working to get Linux working on a tablet and phone. These are not ready for everyday use, but I'm hopeful that in the future we'll have a viable alternative when it comes to running Linux on a phone or a tablet. And even Android has its roots in Linux. And another place that you probably don't expect to hear about running Linux are things like appliances and standalone systems like point of sale systems. Oftentimes these are running Linux in some shape, form, or fashion. And finally, the vast majority of the internet is running Linux. For a long time, when you started to set up a server, you would install what is called a LAMP stack. Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. I'm glad I remembered that. Nowadays, Apache may not be as common, but Linux is still the predominant 
option for a web server. As you can see, Linux is a very complex topic with many areas to explore. If you'd like to learn more about Linux and you want to keep checking out this series, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I plan to keep adding more to this Linux for Beginners series. We'll be discussing questions like, why use Linux? What are some of the differences between Mac, Windows, and Linux? As well as other common questions like, what is a desktop environment and what is a window manager? If you have any questions that you think I should address in this series, feel free to sound off in the comments below. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.